By now, most of you will have seen our new DVD, Twist of Fate, uh, in which we raffled off uh, the 11090. One of the companies here in Ireland that was a very big support to us in that was indeed Farmhand here, and uh, Farmhand and Fast Parts. Fast Parts uh, organised the, the hitch for the Fate through Drummond, and also they are the sole importers of uh, Crone machinery for the island of Ireland. So they also organised the 3201 more and the 880 Squadro, which you've seen in the DVD. So a very big thank you to Farmhand for getting involved with us. And uh, they also invited us over to the Chrome factory with the local competition winner, Damien, who won the prize at the Grass and Muck to get a VIP tour of the factory. And it was a very fascinating trip because we got to understand the very personal relationship that uh, Farmhand have with Crone, and we also got to see the impressive factory from the eyes of a local guy, Damien. So we hope you enjoy this little film based on that. So this man was the lucky winner. Out of seven and a half thousand people put in the tickets, he got to win. And we got to come along to document his wee trip, and he was able to bring what is uh, Ollie, isn't it? Aye. He's one of your, is he one of your best mates? Like, Aye, just one, a mate? yeah, he's, he's just a boy you know. We grew up together, like. But you don't like him? No, <laughs> Right. So, and he got to bring a mate with him, so he brought Ollie. So they both lived together down around uh, close to Enfield. That's how I'm going to describe it. For That's we, pretty much. We were carpet farmers together, actually. Yeah. You were carpet farmers together? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, what's it? Like, it's Amazing. hard to put it into words so far, isn't it? Oh, it's unbelievable. Like, it's huge. Like, unbelievable place, like, you know. <laughs> I've never seen. I never even thought it was going to be anything like a fashion this thing. And then know? some boy gets a big M or something and he goes out around the road and some wee boy steps in and goes, yeah. Who's crap? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of puts it all into perspective out here, doesn't it? Trip here, can't believe it. It's so vast, words can't describe. Like you know, you're taking in so much. So yeah, it's unreal. It's heavy metal at another stage. You know, <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> it really is, eh? Right? And you go home and you try and explain to some guy. You try and go home and you say, here, you just want. You, you really have to see it. Oh yeah, to, to believe it. In this building here is the final test for the harvester. So there's two comes off the production line a day, straight in here. Just look at the shaft. So there's a driver goes in, puts it through all the motions. This is a V12 1100 destined for the US. This, <laughs> this room in here is just unbelievable. And um, it shows the quality and the level that they're trying to get into of quality to make sure everything's there and everything's right. It's uh, very, very, very impressive. Very impressive. And I like me varies. Now we're in the baler section just over, so they're starting the balers, so they start out here, they basically come right up round and come down round, and uh, just over then to the far side, and the other side of that again is the rakes. Assembling all our rakes, at the moment the TS620, that is what we call a side rake, and we have also center rakes in our range, from the single rotor rake from 3.5 meter up to the big one, Svadro 2000 for example, up to a working width of 19.10 meters, and all these rakes we are producing here. At the moment, TS620, when we finish with these models, then the next model come in, comes into the line. 
Yeah, as I already said, here on this uh, on this uh, lane we, bow, we are building the Comprima Bela range. And here on the right hand side we are building the Four Tima range. So two different types of balers. The Comprima balers are more or less for the, I said, for the bigger farmers, for the more professional farmers, for the contractor. And if a farmer would like to have their own balers, then they can also have a look for the Four Tima range. So that we have a baler for both of these um, farmers or both of these customers. Also here the same story, they're preparing the front chamber, preparing the cutting unit, the axle pickup, and then also they put it on a running chain in the floor, and then the baler and the machine moves in the direction of the test run. Big boys toys. Big boys toys. That's correct. Damon, right? Talk to me. <laughs> How did this go for you? Well, from the moment I got a phone call from Stephen from Farmhand in Dublin, they had won this competition. I just couldn't believe it. And from the minute I got on the plane to the minute we landed here in Germany, the whole trip has been phenomenal. Between meeting you guys and the hospitality here and seeing the whole factory layout and complex, it's just phenomenal. And I just and, and just like to say that if anybody's ever interested or thinking in Ireland about coming over to see this company, from the manufacturing right through to the finished product rolling out the back door. It's definitely worth coming to see for any lad that's grass mad or machinery enthusiast big time. It's definitely worth coming like. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, you can see the pride here within everybody that's working and the effort yeah. they put into looking after us. And yeah. then uh, even today we went off and they took us a few miles up the road to <laughs> It's <laughs> the biggest shed I've oh, ever ah, seen. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It shows cruise, like, yeah. cruise liners being built and. Um, and <laughs> it's phenomenal, isn't it? That was unreal, just well, to see that there. But. From my couple of years of experience, I used to work on the Royal and Grand Canal in, in Dublin, back home in Ireland, and I was used to seeing barges, but that boat I seen today, that cruise liner, was just unreal. Like, it's so big, like, you know. But still, it ain't no harvester. No, there's nothing like the bit of green and a bit of uh, tires and a bit of grass in front of you like you know <laughs> that's it well would you like to come back again oh definitely like to come back and, and maybe see in my own time from this trip like a bit of experience to see maybe more farms and get to see more of germany and maybe do a road trip this and is your first time in germany yeah first right? time ever yeah we'll have to you'll have to come over to the agritechnic oh i'll have to go or go to john deere or somewhere like that like <laughs> or maybe and the class it was a privilege to join damien on his visit to the crone factory but luckily this was our second visit. We first visited Crone in 2015 when we took a closer look at some of their machines. Here to my right is the very first Mark 1 Big M, which is the old John Deere cab, John Deere engine, three 10 foot mowers, which was very, very innovative of the time. The technology in this machine is, is quite, quite some age. I think we're going back to 1995 technology. Over here is the very first Big X made uh, and sold. They've both been took in, fully refurbished and they both run and are in conditions for running. So two very, very interesting machines that you can be seen here at the Crone headquarters. Certainly the Big X has come a long, long way from the very first one. Um, we see that. We know from our films we've made through Harry Wilson and Luke First how popular they have been. Crone made a very, very informed decision to hit the, the larger horsepower market at the start and they have now developed that right through to the smaller range of the 480 and the 580. There's lots of developments happening here at Crone, which we can't just talk a lot about. But as I say, you have the Mark 1, then you have the Mark 2, then we're in now to the 400s and the 420s, which is still the benchmark for self-propelled mowers. I asked the question earlier on, who decided or how did it come about that um, Chrome made self-propels? And uh, the answer was simple. Uh, Bernard Crone decided he wanted to make self-propels and he said he was putting the money into it and therefore self-propels were made. Simple as that. We just showed you the first Big X and you've seen the first Big M that was made here. It's been took in rework sitting in the corner. Well, it just shows you what all those years later where Crone are now at with development. You can see the two main models that are in development. You've got the probably the most popular uh, self-propelled that they have made to date which is the basically the 700 which is now coming out as the 770 and then you have 
where Crone are pushing more towards the market share. When you look at the horsepowers, you have the 480 and the 580 range. So you can really see the advances they've made both in style and if you're in the cab and comfort and levels of such and reliability has all come along with that. So these two are the two harvesters at, at the moment that Crone are really pushing hard and going to try and increase their market share with in the future. Crone and Farmhand have had a special relationship for many years and we had the honour of chatting to Bernard Crone Jr. himself and Stephen Scrivener from Farmhand as they discussed the history and partnership of these two successful companies. Uh, my name is uh, Bernard Krone. I'm fourth generation owner of uh, the Krone company. We are specialists in uh, hay and forage equipment. Today uh, we are here in our Spelle plant where we make most of our farm machinery. We started our business exactly uh, 110 years ago in a, a small a blacksmith's workshop uh, right across the road and um, we built up the company over, over the decades. 67 years ago our biggest uh, business was uh, sales of farm machinery. At that time we were a, a Lanz Bulldog dealer and later on we became a class dealer, a Fendt dealer and today we still have our own dealership. I would say um, today my sister is running this business and she is probably the biggest John Deere dealer in Europe. My name is Stephen Scrivener. I'm the third generation Scrivener that's involved in Farmhand. It was started by my grandfather in 1962 on a 50-50 basis with uh, Bernard's father. So started in 1962 and is the only importer for Crone on the island of Ireland. It's a good question why uh, Crone has maybe daughter companies in many regions but not in Ireland. And I think part of it is the close relationship the Scriveners and the Crones have. Our business model is that in regions where we have, have good partners like Farmhand, we prefer actually to have uh, partners who in our philosophy always know a market much better than we can do it. And in Ireland, uh, I think it is a, is a perfect market for us, it's a perfect market for our products, and we have a perfect partner, uh, Farmhand, where we have a really good and long relationship with. And I think this uh, business plan that and this partnership that Crown and Farmhand have it's something that uh, Farmhand decided to adopt from the early days and with our dealerships it's very much of a partnership. They're all mostly or they're all uh, independent uh, family businesses like Crone, like Farmhand and uh, we see it very much as a, a partnership between both of us. So developing the machines, developing the market and then hopefully selling machines at the end of it. I think uh, Ireland is very important for us, uh, especially due to the issue that the conditions are in, in Ireland are quite wet and so we have hard conditions, we have heavy um, uh, silage. We do a lot of testing uh, uh, with our own people but also in, in, in a very close relationship to, to Farmhand uh, that we get the experience out of the market, that we do a lot of testing there. We get a, a very good um, impression about how our machines working in the field because that is where we get a lot of experience and where we also find out where is the strength of our machines but also you know that quite well during a testing period during uh, the early time of, of developing you also get a good experience of things which you can do better or which things you you have to do better that our uh, customers later on when they get the machine uh, two or three years later uh, when we introduce it into markets like Ireland or the northern parts of Europe um, which helps them to to make a better job and, and that they are satisfied with the machine. So um, yes, Ireland has a, has a big role in, in uh, developing our machines, especially for machines for, for wet conditions. I think it is a, a credit to the relationship that Farmhand and Crown have that even though Ireland is a, a very small market and it might be uh, quite small sales wise, uh, if there are problems with machines, Farmhand can turn to Crown and say, uh, there might be a weakness here, something needs to be improved and Crone will actually make the changes. They don't maybe just overlook it and say, oh, it's only 20 or 30 units, it doesn't matter. To Crone, they want every machine 
to work in all conditions. I think uh, that's really been uh, why it's such a successful relationship. We are very open, we are very honest, and I think we are listening to our customers and to our service partners, uh, especially when it comes to, to a problem in the market. It, you know, it, it, it's not that, that we talk about problems with a course by corner. Sometimes they are, you know, problems caused by, by weather conditions or uh, conditions in the field or um, misuse or whatever. So, and that is also we, we want to care about and, and then maybe find a way to do it better. Mm -hmm. I, I would say because I'm, I'm born close to this factory here in Spelle where we make our agriculture machinery. So I would say due to that, um, I, my, my, lie, my heart lies in, in the agriculture, agricultural business. I have grown up in this factory with these machines. Um, uh, we, we started uh, with our trailer business. We started uh, at, the, at the beginning of the, of this, of the 1970s. And um, uh, the, the factory is not as, as close by as, as the agriculture factory. Um, um, of course, the, the business has grown much faster in the, in the past 10 to 15 years, beside, you know, or except the, uh, the time in the, in the big economy crisis, 2008, 2009, 2010. Um, it is uh, by far the, the biggest business we have, the trailer business, the blue, the blue side, so to say. Um, it's a good business and uh, I would say we are, we are one of the market leader in, in commercial vehicle industry in Europe and, and, and we're quite good in it. And uh, uh, so it is, it is a great business and, and is also uh, something which, is, uh, which I really enjoy to, to work in. But um, I would say the, the agricultural business is, is, uh, is, is different. It's, uh, it's more like a big family. And uh, um, I think it's more emotional. And of course, we have, we have very emotional products. So um, no, it's, uh, it's an interesting business. It's a nice business. I think we are also quite good in it. Mm -hmm. uh, also due to our partners uh, uh, like Farmhand. And um, no, I'm really enjoying it, uh, being in this industry, in this business, in this big family. The thing you would least expect to see when you come over to Spell and visit the Chrome factory is a dealership with the name Chrome on it. And uh, as had been followed up, and Bernard Crone explained, his sister runs uh, LVD, uh, John Deere dealership here and it's it's what they do here is they have all the dealerships the largest dealership in germany they have all their different depot sells the new machinery and the parts and all the second hand parts comes here to agro park so what we just walked around there and seen was like all the second hand equipment for everything and if there's any issues they've got the contacts for the export market it's just to me in my mind this is a dealership done right yeah, and here you can have a walk around to see, to have a look for the used equipment. So that is what I already explained. So here are all the used equipment comes to here. They clean it up. They have a look into the workshop to make sure that everything is fine. And then the customer has the possibility to have a look around here. The second hand machinery comes here under this roof, the agro park. So anybody looking a second hand harvest or ever, they're not trailing around the country, they can come here and bang, there she is. I think, and uh, the idea of the super dealer and all the second-hand machinery coming to one place is that. A, do you think is that a successful? Yes, 
sure all the guys have seen everything in the internet and so on but now when a customer looking for something for a tractor or for a tether, rake, plow, whatever so much. then he comes to here the distance uh, yeah, the, the uh, farthest distance from the outside depots from the LVD is maybe 200-250 kilometers away so then he jumps in the car comes over to here and he has the possibility to see everything on one place and I think that is a benefit yeah and also and they're willing to drive yes oh.